I would think believing something as absolutely insane as the moon landings are fake or not real or we haven't gone back, just it, it betrays your idea of not doing research and not thinking about what you say before you speak. Let's talk about this real quick. Recently, I became knowledgeable about something that I found is just very peculiar. We all know about Bill Maher, that weird I hate my wife comedian guy for geezers on live TV who's who's like Biden's number one supporter, except for like the whole weird trans thing, I guess. And too many and like these minorities are getting a little too uppity. That type of guy, Bill Maher, has decided that he was going to follow the footsteps of every other weirdo online personality who finds out that they can make more money by sitting around and talking about nothing for people who are temporarily embarrassed millionaires to start their 5 a.m. morning routine journey before they go to their nine to five job and haven't haven't called their mom in weeks. He has started a podcast where he has different wacky little people on. It's called Club Random, where apparently they get very random. But things don't get any more weird and go south faster than this interview that he had with Candace Owens on his podcast about 11 days ago. This is, it's such an ass name. It's really bad. (laughs) It is really bad. That's really funny. He wears a Hawaiian shirt. Look out, he's too wacky. Club Rar XD. Don't do that. What did he say about transing genders? Well, you'll hear about it. I won't be, we won't, thankfully, and you guys can thank me later, we will not be watching this whole one hour and 25 minute video that he made with Candace Owens, but I will want to watch some of it because some of the weird things that come up here are just so freaking peculiar that I, I, we can't skip them. So we're gonna be skipping to some of the stuff that they talk about, and I promise you, the more we go, the weirder it gets. So let's start here. At first, they started talking about Candace Owens' views on climate change. Yep, that's right. Climate scientist Candace Owens brings, brings her expert ideology on the climate hoax, the green scheme, to make people believe that the planet is dying because we're putting chemicals in the air, turning the freaking ozone gay or something like that but here i'll have her explain but um don't you not believe like in the moon landing so i'm supposed to believe you about climate i I think it's so funny how people take well first off i know what i'm talking about with the climate stuff so me when i me when i absolutely lie I'm just going to go ahead and promote. Well, you're not the you only read. one. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you should probably She's not one, realize actually. like that there is in the same way that there are narratives. I think you're now more awake to the climate hoax is one that funds trillions of dollars. And okay. we are not running out of space. You could fit the entire world if you stacked it like New York City in Dallas. So fit. I just said it's you not said about. Fit, but the point is, is that the fi- hurricanes are down the whole idea that every time it why is he smoking? I don't know, man. Maybe he maybe he hates his show so much he's trying to die quicker. So he's he's hitting pack after pack until he until he's put in the pack. <laughs> or something along those lines. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe he just thinks it's cool. I'm not sure. But this this idea about being able to fit everybody in like every human being in the size of Texas, sure, I guess, but we wouldn't actually be able to live like that. Every human being can stand in Texas. But living in Texas and doing something like that, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, human beings are kind of small. The things we build aren't. We burn a lot of fuel. You know that, right? You know that, like, also, every human being could eat. Like, if you had to feed all those people, it wouldn't all, you wouldn't feed them enough apples to fill up, to, like, you know, fill up one layer on, on, on the entirety of Texas. It'd be much larger than that. Uh, it's just weird. Of course, our agriculture is way bigger than it doesn't even take into account those people driving, moving, taking up electricity. It just doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. That funds trillions of dollars. And OK, we are not running out of space. You could fit the entire world if you stacked it like New York City in Dallas. So fit. I- it's, not, it's not about running out. Of, it's not running out of space to keep people necessarily. People have land. Wait, does he d- does she think that a house is the size of a human being? And in every house is one human being across from another one. Like, what are you talking about? I just said it's you not said about. Fit, but the point is, is that the fi- hurricanes are down. The whole idea that every time it rains, it's because you know, something bad with- is happening is like it's it's OK. What I will agree with you on is this. The environmentalists do often lie because they have this idea 
this issue is so important, and by the way, it is so important, that it's okay if we shade the truth to get people on our side. And I don't agree with that. I'm always- You lied every matter, time. Matter, well, not every- Okay, so I have no clue what in the world Bill Maher is even talking about here. How many times have climate, have climate activists lied? And lied about what? What are you talking about? There have been many different narratives about climate change, exactly what's happening, exactly when that'll happen, especially since every single year there has to be, every single day there has to be a new projection about what could possibly happen and things can change as the tools that we use get better, right? But the idea that they're just like lying all the time, I'd, li I'd love to hear some proof for that. What was your climate disaster growing up? Mine was, mine was global warming. They don't even say it anymore. They don't say global warming no, anymore? No, they don't. No, they say climate change. They, they went from global Maybe cooling. Maybe not in your bubble, but from, in the world they no, do. No, they don't. They went from global cooling to global warming. They never were in global. No one was ever talking. It was one. That's such a stupid talking point that you keep repeating. It's a zombie lie. It was one article in one magazine in one day one week in Newsweek or something. Nobody was talking about global cooling. Yes, we understand that the planet is always changing. That's a different story. No, there was there was a whole climate alarm alarmism via the IPC for global cooling. No, there wasn't. There <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I don't care what the name is. There are different names for many different things. All right. There are many different names for many different things. Right. Like, think about it. Some people call it some people call it Christian nationalism. Some people call it patriotism. Some some people call it conservatism. We here call it mental illness. You know, there are many different names for the same exact thing when it comes to these types of issues, depending on who you ask. With that being said, if you throughout time, people have been talking about this same exact thing, the the slow change of more erratic and worse climate patterns as we keep pumping chemicals into the air. That's what we know it as, all right? Whatever the name specifically is, that's a completely different thing. And yes, in some places, it is getting cooler. Here's the thing that she doesn't understand, that she just actually, she just can't wrap her mind around. In, as, as the climate gets worse, in some places, it will be much cooler. In some places, it will be much hotter. It's less about things being much cooler everywhere and much hotter everywhere. It's more about more erratic weather patterns that are leading to more disasters everywhere. That's that's the thing that's happening. Sure, some years there may be less hurricanes, some years there may be more tsunamis, but what we know is that the climate is changing and that baseline is moving in a direction that's worse for the planet. It doesn't matter what its name is, it doesn't matter exactly which part of it people are talking about, but this is just the idea of, oh, as our understanding of something changes and gets better, she sticks on what we believed a while ago, and then comes forward and says that, well, you believed that a while ago, why don't they just, they were just lying about it. No, our understanding changed. It doesn't make any sense. Can you, can you imagine if she's like, oh, you know what? Oh, a man sneezes on a woman and that's how she gets pregnant because, oh, you know, scientists back in the day used to think that a sperm was just a tiny human that grew in the belly of a woman to become big human. It was, it was a really tiny human in it, like piloting a cum cell that was like flying through the like, flying through the uterus to be able to reach the egg. <laughs> And then when he when it hits, it's able to get in and he breaks out and then and then becomes big human inside of it. That's what people genuinely thought. Like back in the day, we used to actually believe that rats just rats and flies just magically spawned from cheese that was left out. But we know that's different now. She wants to. This is so disingenuous. She wants to believe the things that we used to and then hold it against people now for those opinions changing when we had more information. She's saying that's like negative for science when that's actually how the scientific process works. And for somebody who apparently loves the Western world and our, and our enlightenment and whatever, and being, and being a much more advanced um, um, civilization than those shithole countries, apparently she's completely devoid of the scientific revolution that many Western nations had back in the day, but whatever, I guess we just don't, we just don't pretend like that shit doesn't matter sure okay <laughs> there was but do you uh, believe people landed on the moon well, well, well let's just back because that if up you don't, because you're then going, i think that's no, 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 no. i think that you really sets taking... a standard for this 
So I was going to give a little intro here, but they move into it so quickly. So we'll just talk about it here. After this, Candace Owens then then like tiptoes around the idea of her conspiracy theory uh, that we actually didn't land on the moon. And that was all a hoax by Big Moon to make us. I don't know. To, I don't know. Make us think that we did something cool when we didn't actually. Here, let's let's have her explain it herself. This discussion. You are taking something that was a Twitter. You can't answer it? joke. I'm going to answer your question, okay. but I'm just trying because I think you should add context because what you're doing now is you're jumping away from an actual meaningful discussion about climate change and the hoax that's surrounding it and making people fearful to have children. And you're all going, well, didn't you once tweet when I said, literally, I said in the tweet, it. Let's have some fun today. What is one conspiracy theory that almost got you and that you think like could possibly be be real? And I said, the one that always gets me every time is the moon landing. How come we haven't gone back? So you're taking this one tweet where people then shared the things that they think that were not really serious or political on this long thread to now apply to a conversation about climate okay, change. Okay, but just to that be clear, little, like, people did land on the moon. I don't know. Okay, there we go. I don't know. I, I do know. I just want to know why we didn't go back. We did go back. What did we go back? What year? To the moon? We, we people on the moon? Yeah. Okay. I'm asking now a serious question. When when did we go when did we, we back to people landed, walking on the moon? Uh, 69, okay. July 20th, 1969. Yeah. We went back like 10 more times. Who went back? Who walked on the moon? America. You know the, No, but like what were the astronauts names? Educate me. Why who are the you fuck remembers what the astronauts names were? The, 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 That's a big, it's a pretty big deal to walk on the moon. It, the first guy, and then after that, yes. Who else walked on it? I How don't many? remember the name. It, like another dozen. Okay. Yeah. Are you. <laughs> She's so fucking stupid. She's actually really stupid. If you didn't know, because some people are like, oh, there's no point in going back. There was a point in going back, and we have gone back multiple times. We've landed on the moon. About about 10 times, Apollo 11, the one that people know, that was the first one to land on the moon in 69. Then there was Apollo 12. And then I believe there were a, there were a couple of Apollo 11s. There were a couple of Apollo 12s. There was Apollo 14 and Apollo 16 as well. Like, And multiple people have walked on the moon. 24 people have visited the moon. And out of those 24, 12 have actually walked on the moon. There's... They went to the moon multiple times. All you have to do is just look at it. This is this is a good look into the conservative psyche of weaponized stupidity and weaponized ignorance. She she's going to frame this as she's like just asking questions when you could simply go list of missions to the moon on Google and then pull up Wikipedia and you can find all of the missions to the moon that actually happen. You, you can just look at them and you can just find them. You can literally see them. Like every single mission to the moon ever recorded by humanity, every single last one of them. And just the idea that she doesn't know this, I don't think that she doesn't know this. I think that she doesn't want to know this. She doesn't care about it. She doesn't want to look into it because she has her idea about it not happening. And so it's just hasn't happened. And that's just simply it. That's just how it works. She doesn't believe it happened, so it just didn't happen. Is she going to do any work to prove that it hasn't happened? No. And she's going to use people's what she's going to use people's ignorance on one of the most esoteric topics ever to make herself seem smart about the idea of her just asking, Wells, you don't know exactly who landed on the moon, even though you say that you do, even though we know for a fact that people did. And now she's going to what next? If she if if she, he knew their names off the top of her head, off the top of his head, what next would she ask? Would she be like, oh, do you know their social security number? Do you know how old they were? Do you know exactly when they stepped on the moon? Do you know exactly what they felt like the moon felt like under their moon boots? Huh? Mr. Bill Maher, sir. It's weaponized stupidity to make herself look smart. It's dumb. And to some people, it actually works because <sighs> they praise the idea of being able to continually ask childish why, why, why after every question more than more than they do an intellectual pursuit of becoming a smarter person. It's just it's just stupid. We OK. A lot of other dozen humans walked on the moon. Yes. Americans, all Americans. OK. We don't remember. That. We kept going back. Uh, Apollo. 13 was the one they made the movie about. That was the one they aborted. But that was after we had landed. Apollo 11, I think, was... I'm not one. talking about space missions. I'm talking about actual people walking yes, on the moon. Yes, landing on the moon and walking on it. First of all, it's, it is it is an impressive scientific feat. It's not out of the realm of, like, how... Didn't India just land on the moon or something? There are many countries who have sent things to the moon. 
but like l- putting human beings on the moon is something that I believe only the uh, only America has done, if I remember correctly. How could that possibly happen? It's only 250,000 miles away. They had figured out enough to be able to do it, even with these shitty computers that they had in 1969. Um, yes, it's risky, and we did lose people doing it. Um, but we did do it. I mean, plainly. I mean, the idea that you could think that this was some sort of hoax, I, I'm sorry, but it colors everything else. I, I'm just saying that, like, say. I'm, I'm just not, like, you're, I feel like you're just trying to find this one. Like, I've never talked about this on my show. You're literally talking about one funny tweet It's thread. relevant. It's really it's not relevant that relevant. That it's, le- it's relevant because you're stupid. I think believing something as absolutely insane as the moon landings are fake or not real or we haven't gone back, just, it, it betrays your idea of not doing research and not thinking about what you say before you speak. That it's it's easily disproven by just looking it up. You even it's pro- it, because it proves me proves to me that you believe things that strongly without even beginning to look them up. So thinking that you found the secret sauce to an idea that everybody else doesn't want to believe in because because you just lack the wherewithal to even begin to question whether or not you're right about something. All right, but I want to skip. I want to skip this one really quickly. I want to skip this one really quickly, and we're going to skip ahead to them touching on trans people for a moment. I love about this. And that's that's why I completely understand why people move to places like Austin and Nashville. Yeah. And this this is what they attacked me for so vigorously when I did my editorial about trans, which, you know, I feel like, again, a great demarcation between what liberal is, old school liberal and woke. Liberal believes trans is, of course, a real thing and they should be protected and respected. Woke is like, um, well, before they can like tie their shoe, (laughs) we tell them they very likely might be in the wrong body. I ran your segment on my podcast, actually. It just doesn't even make any sense. What is there's liberal that thinks trans people real, but then there's woke that thinks trans people baby. What are you talking about? What are you what are you even referring to? What they just like they also believe trans but they just go too far on the trans thing? Is is that is that just it? I mean I'd like I'd like some proof for before they can tie their shoes there they should be getting I don't what? <laughs> okay. Alright, buddy. And that's the difference between apparently woke is when you take your children to the doctor to see if they're the to to psycho to to the to the doctor when you think that there might be a psychological problem that needs addressing by a medical professional like gender dysphoria because it was oh, brilliant great. yeah on, on real time you did the segment talking about okay if this is a real thing why is it regional geography <laughs> why is it regional it's brilliant point that's what i was saying yeah. why is it, it so regional yeah, yeah. You, what is it the water here in California? <laughs> it because might be. I've been to dinner parties more than one where there's 12 people and they're all talking about their trans kid. They're all. T- it's almost like that's the norm. Yeah. And that can't really be the norm. I mean, I- bro, look at you. Nothing that you people do is the norm. You're not normal people. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but you're not normal people. Your friends aren't normal friends. The people you talk to aren't normal. Nothing about you is normal. You all, honestly, for their the, their jobs and their connections and all that type of stuff, they're they're connected to abnormal people, and that's simply why they're popular because they're talking about the the smallest of the smallest of the smallest portion of people. And on top of that, you're all filthy rich. You don't live normal lives. None of you live normal lives, and none of you have lived normal lives for the majority of your adult lives. Can we be honest with ourselves here? You're not normal. So I nothing about this is normal. Also, we we know for a fact, and this is just also on Bill Maher's part, just a symptom of not ever looking anything up that you talk about. I think it's crazy that you write a whole editorial without even looking into the things that you would like to edit, write an editorial about. We know for a fact that that high that high, that ideas pervasive in areas can lead to people being in or out of the closet when it comes to certain gender and sexual identities that they identify with we know we we know that we can trace back some things that are linked to people coming out later in life and um, being diagnosed with gender dysphoria that we can pick up even poss- even in the womb sometimes same thing with homosexuality gayness okay 
we know these things for a fact and if and if you believe the idea of people coming out of the closet with being gay why in the world can you not believe that idea when it comes to being trans it just doesn't make any sense you know it just seems like you just want to believe that people are inventing transgenders when all the when the real reason is it's the same thing when it comes to people being in the closet why in the world are there more reg why in the world are they more gay marriages in california than there is in alabama oh is it because it's they're inventing gay people in california no you no you no you baboon in an in a hawaii shirt it's it's just strange how you would try to believe it, how you think uh, anybody would believe any of this. But OK, I mean, people who are bought in already, I, I would imagine they completely believe it. But but yeah, I us get forward to them talking a little bit more after this ad. Some things they like and some things they don't. Yeah, there's a lot of people. But w when we're in agreement about something, I think people feel the same about me in this way. Like when they do agree, it's like that person really I mean, rubs my clit on that, the way they do that. They really, I just love you so much when you go off on something that deserves to be gone off on. Yeah. And I feel like people feel like that. Like what? They do. Like when I go off on something and it deserves that ass kicking mm. and you do it. I mean, you're funny. You have a, I saw you make doing <laughs> the Eminem thing where you were like, <laughs> you were making fun of all his moves. I just don't know what happened. Yeah. If I'm going to be honest with you, I do think Candace is, I do think Candace is funny, but not for the same reasons that Bill, Bill Maher does. I think she's funny because she's stupid. We're uploading a, a video on Candace Owens like earlier, like we're uploading a video on, on Candace like to, today. So I do think she's funny, but just not for the right reason. I think she's funny because she's stupid. I think she's funny for the, how she's so confidently wrong. It's just a spectacle to watch. She's a clown. But outside of that, I don't, I don't, she doesn't seem to do much. That's very funny. Actually. She's like a bad person outside of that. From what I've been able to tell from her online persona. Clown dis. <laughs> little little bit of a clown dis situation. Moving moving on to that, they go on to talk about January 6th and Candace comes out as a complete January 6th denier, basically saying that there's no possible way that the nation was threatened or that Trump supporters really did anything wrong. It went from there, it, they went from this is this is 1776, we're going to take the country back. And and then we went to, oh, it was actually and Tifer and leftists posing as Republicans and Trump supporters to make them look bad, and then we've gone to yeah it was con it, yeah it was conservatives but it wasn't that bad to actually yeah it was bad but they couldn't actually do it because they were old and you'll just take a look at you'll just take a look at it it's pretty bad I mean what was the worst thing that was a small part of a bigger picture the worst well here whoops bread and loaves and, um, you know, stuff m walking out. <laughs> I, take what you're, I take it you're a devout atheist. Devout. Okay, gotcha. I think probably Pence is running because he doesn't know what to do next. Also, this was recorded, I think, a day before Pence dropped out of the race. So he's not running. Progression to think he can be president. And also because he kind of tried, he wants to separate his brand from trump which i think he feels like got murky and there's some genuine bad blood there so i don't i actually oh, there's definitely bad some blood, blood yeah blood but there. i don't think any of them are running to be trump's uh, vp because they all trashed him on the stage but vague is the only one trump would consider trashed him trump they kissed his ass trump yeah Ooh. the only one who trashed him is chris christie Chris Christie trashed him. DeSantis said nothing to be fair DeSantis yeah. like didn't say anything the whole night they they, they all raised their hand when they said if DeSantis did the well, OK, but they raised their hand, except for Christie, when they said, would you support him as the nominee? I mean, that's pretty amazing for a guy who's, you know, probably going to be convicted for what he should be convicted for. And I'm sure we agree on this, Candace. Definitely sure we agree um, on this. About, absolutely, you know, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Candace is Candace is one of the like oh Donald Trump should be able to be God King Emperor of the United States type girls. This they did listen. This is the failing of libs like Bill Maher. He thinks that can he's like, oh, I want to get to the human in Candace, right? He thinks that she's cool, she's funny, but they have some disagreements. He's completely unaware of the insanity that is Candace Owens and how absolutely just un unimaginably stupid that this person is and the depths of which they're, in some cases, genuine evil actually goes. He actually simply doesn't get it. He does not get it. 
Candace would like push for laws to put like <laughs> that could easily put people like Bill Maher in jail. And he just doesn't he just doesn't get it. He the he's actually lucky. A lot of a lot of these these people are genuinely lucky that they live in a country with such strong institutions that something like January 6 has been stopped and other in, in, in other like attempts of overthrowing the nation has been stopped because the way they pal around with these same people. But like Bill Maher pals around with the same exact people who were championing January 6th. It's just weird. It's just weird behavior. Oh, trying to overthrow the government of the United States. Um, you're just not like you're not a weak enough person to really like I, I don't buy this this i think you i think you dance this way because you think you have to placate okay first of all no I was, chance no first chance of all, you, like just you to think educate that you. we almost lost america on january 6th like, i just don't buy that you that you're that soft yeah i do um and just to educate you a little on this i was saying this for five years when everyone was laughing at me for saying this that trump would never concede the election and he would never go away i was all alone on a raft but i mean you saw blm riots right yeah, the summer leading up to this, right? Where like you, I lived in D.C. at this time, where you couldn't go outside. Cars were flipped, things were burned, people yeah. were boarding up their oh, windows. Yeah. But you thought the end of democracy. You can say this meaningfully in place happened when people above the age of like sixty five stormed the cap. Like you thought that was the worst thing you've ever seen in, Amer in American politics. Well, I mean, what was the worst thing? That was a small part of a bigger picture. The worst, the worst thing was that finally we had a president after all this history that we've had, nobody ever did this, not Al Gore and not Nixon, who probably didn't actually lose their elections. They allowed this uh, peaceful transfer of power to happen. We finally had a guy who decided, of course, because he's insane, decided that no matter what happens, I won this election. There's only two things that could possibly happen. I win the election, or if I don't win the election, there must have been some cheating. It was looked at by his own people around him, including the Homeland Security Department, including the. OK, so I'll stop it here for a sec. Here's the thing. What Candace, what Candace fails to talk about, because what she fails to mention, because I know she knows it, what they've been doing ever since 2020 has been putting together a very detailed, intricate story to explain why, why people were there prepared to commit crimes, why people were there with with plastic handcuffs, why people were there with masks, with guns, even though those are illegal, with weapons, either makeshift, why people were duct taping knives to flagpoles to make bayonets, why all of these things were happening, why they got why they were doing that and why they got into the House chamber and Senate chamber and why they were even really there to begin with is to overthrow the government, to stop the certification of the election and to institute Donald Trump as the continual president of the United States for at least another four years. But if the institution is broken that much, probably for as long as he wants to live or as long as he wants to be there and then install his own guy after that. This is a fact. And this is something that we all know, but she doesn't want to talk about because it makes her look bad. Eliza Schaefer, Eliza Schaefer isn't 60. There's a, so many people there were so many people who were there at, at January 6th who were definitely not 60. I, I would say that most of the crowd is not 60. At, I mean, at most, I would say the, the average age of the people there was like 45, 50, but not, but not 60. Trying to say that this is some like, I'm sorry, like, it, and even if you think that, oh, it was just a bunch of 60-year-olds, those 60-year-olds killed at least like four people that day. We saw videos of people climbing the walls and chasing down cops and beating people. None of those people were 60. Some of the, like some of them were my bad. Some of those people were 60, but these people doing some of the most vile things at the Capitol were not 60. At the end of the day, what she wants to know, vast majority of the January 6th defendants are not elderly. Yeah, I mean, just take a look at this. These are some of the defendants. 39. 37, 30, 21, 28, 44, 35. There's 54. There is a 60 in here. Or was it? Yeah, here's 160. Here's 160. Here's one. There's like four 60s there. There you go. There's another 60, 22, 53, 45, 49, 32, 25. These people are young. These people are fairly young. 23, 28, 31. These are not old people. Most of these people are not like... 
geriatrics and it doesn't matter because all of these people are like super pro gun rights and you know what they'll tell you about guns what are they what what's that little name that they give them the great equalizer yeah baked alaska is not 60. the the great equalizer is is something that it doesn't matter how old you are if you can pull a trigger you can kill someone there's a reason that why they were in nancy pelosi's desk with guns at nancy pelosi's desk with guns there are reasons why they were going from chair to chair and looking under seats in in the house and the senate there's a reason why they were trying to break into the house and senate chambers all right with with guns with with makeshift bayonets all right with with hand with like handcuffs all of these people were going there specifically to stop people and or kill them and the idea that that's not true is just is just the silliest lie that I've heard in my entire life. Because even the people that were there and were defendants are going to tell you this. The people that in their recordings that they were taking as they were going into the Capitol will tell you this. We have we people were on the ground. People were recording themselves saying this type of stuff. And then she's going to come out here and tell you that they're that they're lies. I mean, like we've talked about it before, but can you even imagine that you're a Trump supporter? You put your life on the line for Donald Trump. You're like, we're going to kill my ass is going to kill Nancy Pelosi and we're going to install Donald Trump as the God King Emperor of the United States forever. And no goddamn darky, darky, trans, commie, left, leftoid is going to stop me or take down my movement. And then and then you get arrested and you fail. And the talking heads that you were watching for like fucking 300 hours a, a week go on and put your picture up on their tv show and say that you're fucking antifa okay and that you were implanted there to make conservatives look bad can you imagine that can you imagine like preparing to go to jail for what you did for these people as they're sitting there telling telling others to to their face that you were planted by antifa to make donald trump look bad and you're fake you're fake you're not real you're a fed actually Hundreds of federal agents were there at January 6th that day, backstabbed. It's, I, I, I just think it's funny. I just think it's really funny, if I'm going to be honest with you. It's actually one of the funniest things in the world, in my personal opinion. And so outside of that, they didn't talk about anything much more important. I mean, they, they talked a little bit about sex here at the end for like the last, like, th this is like 30% of the video. They talked about sex being boring. Wait, let's touch on this for a moment. It's perversion of all, and married people admit to it. They admit that it's so boring to have sex that they freely think of other people when they're having sex. Yeah. I find that to be the worst perversion of all. You're My ass is not listening to them talk about fucking. So that's the end of the video. Uh, these people are, are sick. I hate Bill Maher. I hate Candace Owens. They're both, they're both very stupid. And it's not surprising what's happening here but i find it i found it like pretty interesting to talk about some of this stuff because the absolute continual lies and 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 weird mentions by these people is just i don't know it's just it's just too interesting to pass up i had to touch on it to pick a little bit into the brain of a conservative and conservative liberal so so weird thank you clandis thank you maher very interesting Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button. If you don't, it'll make Boo very sad. I know a bunch of you who are watching are not subscribed. Join the frenzy. You won't regret it. <laughs> Thank you, Boo.